Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 37 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, Cloud Computing Recruitment Specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we will be talking about the Amazon, Facebook, Google and other big tech firms are also collaborating with higher education institutions to provide training in specific areas of computing in the hopes of producing qualified workers. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three training tips. Hi Dave, it's great to see you on the training show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here, great topic. It is, we do love this training topic. So a great opening question would be, how will cloud computing training shift from private companies to the colleges then? Well, it looks like it's occurring now. I mean, Amazon's um, doing some great things. We talked about uh, that on this uh, this show in terms of their, um, you know, training high school students and, uh, you know, kind of having pop-up training camps and months. And this is a, a kind of a step in a more logical direction. Um, and kind of full disclosure, I was a adjunct professor at computer science at Northern Virginia Community College, which is named in the release, but other community colleges are basically are you know following following suit and i think they're more malleable in their ability to kind of leverage state-of-the-art curriculum because that's how they make money and so they teach people how to use whatever the latest software package is whatever the latest technology is they have to change all the time very very agile to to get to their student base which is largely people who have college degrees already um, they're just going back and getting you know associate's degrees to recertify a technical skill and things like that and so the ability to have Amazon training, Google training, Microsoft training courses is just about Amazon training, I think is a logical step forward. And I think that colleges are going to have the opportunity if they don't, if they invest in the right ways and make the right investments going forward, you know, to kind of lead the way in people getting retrained in technology. Number one, they're typically right down the street. They're all over the place. Uh, classes are at nights and weekends, things like that. They accommodate uh, people who are going back into the work back into the cloud computing workforce. They'll typically be able to provide certifications from the particular vendors. And there's not a lot of politics that occurs uh, within the community college versus, you know, some of the universities that are out there and making making this stuff happen. So I think it's uh, they're not obviously research based. They're just based on training people. That's all they do. So this is going to be a marriage that I'm going to watch pretty closely. Amazon and the community colleges out there and the smaller universities and things like that as they make training occur. Uh, I do think there's going to be some shift in people who are going to look for training that occurs from the community college levels. I do think, however, the community colleges are going to have to basically accommodate kind of the, the technical capabilities of some of the private companies out there. I mean, Lynda.coms and the uh, and Simply Learns and all the other cloud guru, and there's a dozen other companies that do the same thing, you know, to provide CBTs, um, lectures on demand, um, you know, things like that, that they you know, typically haven't done traditionally. Um, the ability to kind of have uh, Amazon trial accounts, get into those things, play things up, be able to do some real significant things on the technology, things like that. And so if the colleges and univers smaller universities are able to accommodate the tech trends and basically keep up with the needs of the people who are going to look to consume this stuff, and it's not, you know, 18, 19, 22-year-old people. It's going to be 30s, 40s, 50s people that are, you know, getting into a new career, basically trying to find a new career path where they work, and your ability to kind of keep, to, you know, keep up with technologies and provide kind of state of the art, you know, um, you know training uh, as very much like the private companies, I think is going to be critical, critical to success. So, I think we're going to see big things from this coming forward. But the colleges, universities are going to have to become much more technically astute than they are right now. Yeah, they really are. And, and I think there's a, a good example of this is Google. Uh, Google have got a, an IT support professional certificate specialization, which is offering scholarships for, I think, 10,000 students, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. And I know it's already it's um, it's offering a tech support course uh, through, I think it's 25 community colleges in seven states in the US. Uh, and I think as of June, 40,000 students had already enrolled in the actual college course. So it's it's pretty amazing the, the, the uptake on people and the interest, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I mean, a technical support's a great way to start a career in a technical in technical arts. I mean, I did technical support when I was in college and that prepped me, um, you know, great for, uh, you know, getting out of, and getting into the more career oriented jobs when I got out because your ability to kind of work with people and solve problems and really kind of think on your feet 
uh, is going to be core to what a technical support organization is. And so there, what Google's trying to do is basically create training so people are going to be um, available to them so Google can be a good company. And same with Amazon, same with Microsoft. And so we have a shortage of people right now. There's not a lot of um, good qualified people out there chasing too few jobs. Excuse me, too few candidates taking, uh, chasing many job openings that are going on right now. And you just really have to get into the fan where we need to build the people going forward. And this is this reminds me of Apple back in the 80s. Apple used to give computers to elementary schools, you know, by the thousands and tens of thousands. And basically what they did was successful because people who got out of the uh, elementary schools and out of the high schools were already proficient in Macs and they didn't even know how to use a, a PC. And so people were you know, basically asking for Macintoshes when they went to college. And I think uh, basically Amazon so can do the same thing here. So this is good business. It's good for the economy. It's good for people in general able to kind of change their career. Um, and this is exciting, you know, for uh, folks out there that really are kind of, you know, gung-ho education because we need to get the people, we need to get the people trained. And so this is one of the ways to do it as quickly as we can. Yeah, it truly is. And it's, it's nice that people are going into it, like you say, into a, it's like the foundation, not the foundation level, but a tech support, you know, course, you know, like it, it will offer the opportunity to have the insight into where, where you're, you feel you want to go. You know, it's going to give you the idea of what sort of problems you are encountering in so many different levels that you go, well, I actually prefer this, this stream to go in. So it's more of a, it can be more of a directional opportunity, not just a, a vocation to stay in, wouldn't it be? Yeah, it would be. And also you get the fun little uh, incidents that used to occur when I was you know, doing tech support at a big telecommunication firm. And I asked, I asked a, uh, 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 someone else in the company, uh, they were having issues with their uh, file. I told them to send me a copy of their disk. And the next day I got a photocopy of their uh, floppy drive. And I thought that was uh, pretty good. And so it just kind of gets goes downhill from there. But no, it's absolutely the best place to learn and how to deal with people and also changing problems. So you know, I always tell people, you know, do a couple of things if you want to accelerate your career. Number one, get into technical support because uh, they're always looking for good people to do that. Uh, and, and typically going to be hands on support, not phone support, but phone support is fine. And then the number two is, uh, you know, figure out a skill, learn a skill as much as you can and, or, and be a consultant. So, you know, work for a consulting firm, which will, you know, put you on uh, 20 different projects in a year and you'll get, uh, you know, five years of training in a year. Yeah, great. And I mean, that moves us on nicely. It sounds like you've already give us, given us some really good you know, tips already. But, you know, if you want to share your top three tips for training for the training show this week, Dave, that'd be great. Yeah. I mean, number one is, you know, keep the course quality in mind. I mean, it's one thing to have the community college offer the course. And obviously, if it's right down the street, you may have taken other classes at the community college. I mean, welding seems to be a popular class at community colleges around uh, this time. Um, make sure you research the quality of the course. So using the latest, greatest technology, the instructor is, you know, is known to do a good job. You're using a book and materials are going to basically challenge you so you understand things going forward. And you have access to on-demand help. So you can send somebody an email, whether it's your instructor or some other person at Amazon who's dedicated to make this happen, uh, to get the support that you need. So you're never going to be stuck. And so keep that in mind. Uh, over the private companies, um, you may have a trade-off in uh, terms of um, you know quality in some instances, whether you're going with a private company or a college or university. I can't really tell you one way or the other now. So do your research and make your own decisions. I suspect there's going to be uh, the normal hit and miss out there in terms of uh, courses and how people, how things are done. You know, keep the tech in mind where things are going and what to learn. Uh, people have a tendency to kind of focus on a specific you know software package or something like that. Well, what's going to be relevant in two years and three years down the line? You know, is it going to be, obviously, Amazon Web Services is going to be there, but what about other systems? What about being an architect? What about being a database specialist, machine learning specialist? All these sorts of things really kind of come to bear. Um, so understand where you think things are going to go. Do your research there and make sure you're kind of going where the ball's being kicked, not where the ball's currently at right now, considering you're starting your career. And then watch out for courses that are too basic. Um, and I run into this all the time where um, the people are going into college, universities to get courses on programming, things like that. And they, they just really don't go anywhere. You know, they kind of start, you know, use older books, things like that. Probably the textbook the professor wrote 10 years ago. Uh, and you have to get something that's uh, quick, you know, moves forward. 
Typically, there's not going to be a course book. You know, it's all going to be online and changing dynamically. Typically, you're going to have access to the technology on demand. So you can try things out. Typically, it's going to be the practical exercises and what you're tested on. It's not going to be written tests or Scantron cards and things like that. So make sure people are giving you the state of the art, uh, state of the art course and training for your money, whether it's going to a college university or it's going to a private company. Uh, great top three tips there, Dave. Thank you so much for sharing those. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's great to have you on the training show every week. It really is. That's well, great, man. Go ahead and get trained. And it sounds like you can do it at your community college, which is a great value in education. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And I love the story about the copy of the drive, by the way. I forgot to mention that earlier, but I, I love the fact someone photocopied their floppy drive and uh, and sent you the floppy disk on, in, a, in a picture. That's just That's just genius. Yeah, that was one of many stories. <laughs> Excellent. Again, thanks, Dave. I really appreciate your time. My pleasure. And thanks for watching, everyone. Really hope you enjoyed watching this week's training show. You can reach out to Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and colleagues. Uh, and remember to click the notification bell as well so you are updated with the regular shows that come out every week. Thanks for watching, and until next week.